Hello everybody, it's Sissy Matt Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Basante C45. This is a tier 8 Italian heavy tank, and honestly, I'm really disappointed with it. So starting off, let's go ahead, jump over, look at some statistics here. Um, starting off, PC statistics, this is something I want to share. 11.51, 14.38, and 16.30. And once we swap over to console... They don't even have the reload rate here posted, but they do have shots per clip, aim time, penetration, everything else. So they, they've made it to where you have to do multiple steps just to be able to find out exactly what this tank is doing. And whenever you look at the reload time down at the bottom left, you're going to see 17.5, 20. 20.5. So your first shell takes 20.5 seconds. Your second shell is going to take 20. Your third shell is going to take 17.5. Other than that, um, a lot of the statistics on this tab are being boosted by my crew. So that's why we're going to be using the website, just because the website's going to be a lot easier to look at. Along with that, we're going to be looking at 0.42 gun dispersion value with a fully maxed out crew. And you're focused on trying to bolster your accuracy as much as you can. You can get it down to 0.21. Along with that, your top speed, you're looking at 50, combined with that, 15 reverse speed. The reverse speed in this tank is actually not too bad. The top speed is absolutely phenomenal, but the problem this tank usually has is the 12.46 horsepower to weight. It's not exactly the greatest power to weight at all. It's If you want to try and get the most out of this tank, I sacrificed coded optics in order to be able to get the um, power terrain, the 5.5, five, so the 5% top, top speed, 5% horsepower, just to be able to give it that extra little oomph to try and get into more aggressive positions and to help it with, you know, basically anything you need to help it with. And the extra 5% horsepower, it's going to bring it from 600 to 630. So that little bit of an increase is about 0.7 per ton. So it's, it's it's quite the difference once you do that. Signal range, 525. Not exactly the greatest signal range. Assist damage inside this tank is going to be really hard depending on the distance of the target and how far you're pushing up compared to the rest of the um, people inside your platoon or on your team. Next up is terrain resistance. We have 1.1, 1.2, 2.3. So from my experience and the amount of matches I put inside this tank, I would say that the terrain resistance on hard and medium the 1.1 1.2 it feels fantastic however whenever you hit that soft terrain you're gonna feel this thing just get stuck it's it's just uncomfortable you you lost all of your momentum you lost all of your horsepower you lost all of your traverse speed your turret doesn't get affected by that but it just you feel it next up <clears throat> oh oh i am regretting this one. Turret armor, 185, 80 millimeters on the side, and they have 50 millimeters of rear armor. Keep in mind, the Basante actually has a lot of spaced armor on this tank. So whenever you're looking at it, you got all this additional spaced armor going all the way around it. Even on the sides, um, you do have spaced armor. Just a tad bit, which I selected the wrong one. We want to go visual. A little bit of spaced armor going along the side. Now... Um, my experience with the matches that I was playing with this inside public queues and I was streaming it over on Twitch, I was testing out the armor to see how well it would hold up compared to tanks GG and don't trust any of this absorbed, absorbed 0% chance absorbed. Don't trust any of that at all. I was getting shot by light tanks, um, specifically the bad shot 12 ton and the 1375 they were just coming up behind me and I was trying to side scrape with the rear and they went right through it without a problem. Now, another really big problem about this tank, we have 60 millimeters of armor, 75 millimeters of armor, 90 millimeters, and then it comes up to 40, 30, 30, 20. This is just one big fat target for artillery. And to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, let's actually go back. Let's come up to USA. While in USA, let's select an SPG. Let's go tier 8. So starting off, this tier 8's got 88 millimeters of pin, which means if it lands anywhere on top of you, it's going to penetrate. Combined with that, if it's fully upgraded, you're looking at 102 millimeters of pin 
for 1800 damage. I have been one shot in the Basante, not on stream, lucky for me, but I have been one shot artillery focused. I have not had a lot of fun. The best ones I can give you right here, this replay was actually done against a Hummel, a tier six Hummel, you know, coming up, you know, no problem. Standard match starting off nice and simple. Taking my time and my shots here. Let's go ahead and fast forward. We're going to jump up a tad bit. Artillery splashed us right now for 60 hit points. But then we pull up. We get hit by the Type 59-2 that's out there. So no problem. Looking, trying to see where he pinned the armor. I want to try and learn the armor, see how it's working. Artillery hit us. Take a look at how much it hit us for. And then we're going to go ahead and go up a little bit. Fast forward a tad bit more. I'm sorry about this. I should have added this out. But... I took my sweet time to do this, and it doesn't want to listen to anything I'm saying. Artillery run coming, 623 hit points from a tier 6. The armor on this tank is not the greatest. You're going to be feeling it just lacking. However, what the Basante does have to offer is that high explosive penetration. It has 105 millimeters of a high explosive pin. Combined with that, you have 218 standard pin. The velocity of your standard rounds is 1,155. The velocity of your 270 heat pin is um, 800. And then your high explosives at the 105, it's 800 as well. So your premium and your high explosives, same velocity. Whenever you're swapping rounds, you're going to want to lead a little bit more. But not really feeling you know, too much of a difference. But if you can make the 105 work, the 105 is absolutely devastating with that 440 alpha. But that also depends if you want to sacrifice your reload. Because you're looking at anywhere between a 45 second to a 57 second reload overall with this tank. And that just, it really limits what you're able to do with the Passante. Now, from my personal experience in this tank, there is a lot of moments you, you can get hauled down. And if you're hauled down, you want to make sure that whenever you get hauled down, you're, you're hauled down, hauled down. Because if you're just slightly hauled down, and let's say you're locked up like this, you're maxed out your gun depression, and then you had the enemies off in the distance, and they're shooting at you, you got these tops right here, and then top of your armor, but your top, if they're loading in the heat rounds, and they aim a little bit higher up, that 20% chance to go through right there on console, it's actually around a 50% chance to a 45% chance ever since update 6.0. They boosted the penetration. Along with that, um, a lot of the armor models on tanks GG because of that update a while back has made it extremely difficult to be able to effectively use tanks GG anymore for our arm, armor models over here on console. But the entire top of the tank of the Basante can be overmatched. And if you are face-hugging the Basante in for underneath the turret, if you have a 105 or bigger, just because if you can kind of nick that lower part right on the um, top of the hull armor, it is only 30 millimeters. And if you're firing a 122 millimeter, you can actually aim a little bit further down. So as a really good example, we'll go ahead and swap over to a tier 8 with a 122, which is the... 112 the 112 has a 122 millimeter so if you take a look in the front here the entire front that 40 millimeters that was originally there if you're face hugging this tank 122 millimeters or bigger you're going to be able to aim right underneath the gun mantle and you're going to overmatch it every single time if you're brawling it and hopefully that helps you guys if you ever experience face hugging one of these and you don't really know where to aim so uh, it's probably going to help me out later now the Vasante. Let's go ahead and jump on the replay. I'm actually going to remove myself from the uh, cam here. Yeah. Um, I still don't have any editing software. I kind of just go with the flow on how this is. Um, the view range of this tank, whenever you're rocking with advanced optics, situational awareness, so you have to run the perk and the equipment, you're looking at about 443 meters, 444 meters of view range. But with a premium consumable, you can kind of get away with sacrificing your coded optics to get that 402 meters of base view range, but then you have your premium consumable, which is going to be also increasing it. And it's it's kind of um, really hard to not run with the 5.5 on this tank now since I added it, just because it's a 50 ton tank with 12.46 power to weight, and adding that 5.5 gives it 13 power to weight, and that extra whole, whole ton, maybe even that extra whole, you know, 
0.7 of a ton or even 0.6 of a ton of power to weight is going to really affect this build and make it to where it gets in positions a lot faster. You know, faster than a, a Basante, a stock Basante would. Along with that, if you're going to be making your crew around this tank, I would say focus around the gun. Focus around firefighting. You're going to want to have firefighting on this tank because the fuel tank, it's it's massive in the rear and you don't have a lot of armor in the rear. So whenever an artillery hits you and it splashes you, there's a chance it's going to set you on fire. It's going to damage your ammo rack. You're going to want to take a premium repair kit, guaranteed. And if, if you want to play this tank without a premium repair kit, you're going to find it struggling a lot because if that ammo rack gets hit, that 22.5, you can already imagine what it's like doubled. So, Basante, though, how I feel about it in the matchmaking, you know, going over statistics, statistics look good other than the reload. Now, whenever you're actually in this tank, in the fight, you feel aggressive whenever you're loaded. You feel like you can get in there, get those three shots out, or even get the one shot out, get another one shot out, and then clip out the target with your three rounds. But one of the biggest problems that I've experienced inside the Basante is the armor on tanks gg i've gone over the armor on tanks gg i've played the tank i've gone through i've tried to make the armor work the best that i can i'm getting an average ricochet per match right now of over 2000 with the Passante c45 but there's just a lot of angles that on tanks gg it says it should be an auto ricochet but in fact here on console they're ripping right through it along with the way that the gun handling fills, the 0.42 gun dispersion value. Um, you could be 100 meters away from a target and watch your shell just completely miss the target. And an experience like that, it really takes away from the tank. Honestly, whenever they imported this tank over to console with the base statistics and they left the base statistics, I'm kind of hoping that later in the future they actually increase the reload of this tank. Um, from my personal recommendation, I would say two seconds off of every single shell would make this tank competitive but as of right now this tank is not competitive the way i look at the basante right now this is more of a support tank more than a um yeah it's, it's more like a mid-range support tank using it to rush in you're, you're gonna rush in you're gonna get your one shell off and in the time it takes you to reload the enemy's gonna get two shells on you or if you clip them out with all three rounds, then you're basically out of the fight for another 50 seconds unless you want to have one of the worst DPMs in the game with a 16 second reload 360 alpha. And another, yeah, well, one more. There's a lot of tanks in game that have a 12 second reload with a 440 alpha. For instance, we have the 50 TP prototype that has a 440 alpha and even without a gun rammer only using perks to increase your reload you have a 12.5 second reload if you're going head to head against let's say the 50 tp and you ricochet two of your shells and you're basically just trying to trade with the 50 tp the 50 tp more than likely is going to kill the basante just because of the reload but you can also have the argument that the basante has got a three shot auto loader you can put two rounds in and then you can swap over to you know the full clip out and you can just clip them out and then start your reload but if you're in like a multi multiple tank fight you don't want to try and clip somebody out because you want to maintain your dpm as much as you can sacrificing your dpm is just not going to help you now for the price tag that this tank has i'm i'm not exactly happy with the tank it's over 10,200. so it's, you know, it, it's on the cheaper side, but it's also the pricey side. It's still a $50 tank to a $40 tank. It, it's expensive. And whenever I pay for a tank and I get a premium tank, I want it to be at least mildly competitive. Now, the shots in the ISM here, we got one. We got lining up the second, and, well, I shot the rock. My fault. But the gun dispersion values combined with the reload rate... This is actually one of the worst guns I've ever experienced inside this game. Now, if they bring in the Rossarante, the tier 10 Italian Heavy, I'm just a little bit afraid because that, you know, on PC they complain about the Rossarante. Because it's got some of the worst gun handling combined with some of the worst DPM that you can get. And if, if they bring it over and they, they have it debuffed, essentially, 
I I don't find that it's gonna be a tank that anyone's gonna want to grind out. It'll be one of those tanks that you're gonna see on the field for a couple of weeks, and then it's just gonna disappear because it's it's not competitive. For instance, the IS-4, you don't see the IS-4 too often because it's not as competitive as it used to be. Back when the IS-4 first came out, it was a monstrous tank, really hard to take down, and then everyone learned about the weak spots, and its weak spots are very big and really hard to miss. So, taking on the IS-4, it became a lot easier. Same thing about watching the Object 260. If you if you see an Object 260 out in the field, um, there's a buff for the Object 260 that we would like to see, which is the 50 millimeters of armor on top. It's not 50.8, it's just 50 millimeters. Um, 155s can still overmatch the top armor, 152s can still overmatch the top armor, but 149 millimeters and lower cannot overmatch the top armor on the 260 on PC, which made that tank competitive again. But whenever the entire roof of your tank can be overmatched, it it really takes away from the competitive nature of the tank, and it requires you to have like two play styles instead of a tank. For instance, the Rosarante here, you want to rely on gun depression. You want to rely on assisting players. This tank is not meant to be a front row brawler. If you're brawling inside of a Basante, you do not have enough armor to brawl inside this tank. You have 70 millimeters of side armor. Combined with that, you have 185 millimeters inside the front armor. And then your your 185 in the front goes to 165, and it slowly starts to drop down to 135. It continues to drop down to 120. But, you know, the, the entire top plates, it's kind of like a little bit smoothed out. It's not a flat plate. It's just kind of like an arc. And in arc hull, one of the problems you have with arc hull is that all they really have to do is aim a little bit lower, and they're going to hit it flat on, and they're going to go right through it. Now, the 20 millimeters of top armor, the rear armor, especially on this tank, is only 30 millimeters. So, when you're getting hit with high explosives from the rear, it's going to get overmatched all the time by 105s. 90 millimeters can bounce, but 20 millimeters, all of the spaced armor around this tank is 20 millimeters. Which, you know, whenever heat round hits 20 millimeters of armor, it's going to lose 10% of its overall penetration for every single 10 millimeters it travels. Which means that whenever you hit the spaced armor, and then you hit the hull armor, more than likely, depending on the angle you hit that spaced armor at, you're going to lose anywhere between 25 to 30 percent of your overall penetration on your round, and it's just going to hit the armor and not have enough penetration to go through. Now, whenever facing the Basante, it's depending on the player, it, it can be a good tank, but. Primarily, each time I've gone up against one of these inside, let's say, my Kree Vets, or I'm inside my T-54E2, which has a three-shot autoloader that reloads in 27 seconds, 28 seconds, I feel like I absolutely steamrolled the Basante. Because in the time it takes him to reload two shells, I've already loaded my clip. And that, to me, it, it, it just, it feels like they were a little bit lazy on making this tank. They didn't really super test it too much. And they just added it into the game, into the state that it was in. And it's just, it, it really sucks that this tank came in in this state. This was not ready to be released. The reload is just phenomenally bad. The gun handling, just to put the icing on top, phenomenally bad. Now, don't get me wrong, if, if you enjoy playing the tank, you can get good matches in it. This was one of my matches that I had. That turned out to be a good match, but keep in mind, to get this match, it required me to play about 35 matches to 40 matches. I want to say, I want to say 35 matches. I'm actually looking at it right now. I'm trying to find it. Two seconds. But the high explosives inside this tank, 35 matches. It was 35 matches. But the Basante, I do not recommend it for competitive at all. This tank is more like, if, if you're a collector and you want to collect tanks, you want to hold on to tanks, this tank can be a really good part of your collection, just because it's an Italian Heavy, it's a one-of-a-kind. Along with that, um, making silver inside this tank, the four hours that I was playing it live, I only made, I want to say, 600,000 in four hours. I do not feel like this tank was making me much silver to, at all. 
and swapping over to let's say another tank that's a single fire or another auto loader I was making anywhere between 80,000 to 140,000 a match and then going inside the Passante I felt like I was losing silver almost every single match that I played inside this tank even though I was making silver I never really felt like I was making a lot of silver now one of the scariest things about the Passante would be the fact that this tank has 270 heat pin and if you can land all three of those shells that's a very scary amount of premium pin especially if you're top tier having premium pin like that makes it extremely hard to take on now this match 4528 we got 1844 experience earned it, it was a good game however if this match would have gone any other way it would have been a bad match just because the Basante isn't really that jack-of-all-trade tank like a lot of people want it to be. Now, the reload is probably the only drawback of this tank. The armor on tanks GG, I would like them to see them kind of revamp a lot of tanks because there's penetrations that are going through that should not be going through. And it, it's just, it's really hard to play a game that you want to be competitive, yet nothing lines up compared to what it should be. Now, do I recommend the Basante? No. I do not recommend this tank at all to anyone. Just because its reload is absolutely horrible. I, I mean horrible. Compared to... Let, yeah, compared to the 50 TP, the 50 TP's first shell, and its only shell that it's going to be loading in, is 14.13 seconds. And this is with a gun rammer, this is with a crew... But whenever you look at reload time inside statistic boards, that never changes. Just a rate of fire is going to change. Now, this tank, the 50 DP, it's going to hit you for 440, and it's going to reload three seconds faster than your first shell. Which means you're going to have to try and make sure that you make sure you penetrate him, but he can control the engagement because he has the armor to control it. Along with that, he has better dispersion values to control the battle as well to give you an idea and better dispersion values 2.7 and don't get me wrong i do have a crew on this tank that's helping it out a little bit along with the passante i'm running a very simple perk loadout skills we're gonna be going born leader rapid loading gunsmith steady aim snapshot run and gun track mechanic situational awareness and six cents so looking at the crew I'm really focused on the gun, and you watched a lot of shells absolutely with it. Because it still has a .21, but even with the .21, it doesn't feel like .21. The gun handling on the move inside the Basante, I don't know what the exact numbers are, because console doesn't disclose those numbers. They never have. They never will. Well, they might later in the future. But I would like to see the turret rotation dispersion values. I would like to see everything else that we have. But I can tell you now, Basante, it's got some of the worst I've ever experienced. Now, if you're a tank collector and you want to get the Basante, Basante can be competitive. But it's going to require a high skill cap and a lot of practice inside of it to learn the armor. The armor on this tank, it's similar to a lot of others. But with the extra spaced armor, the thin hull armor in the front, and the decently thick 185mm turret armor with the additional 20mm of spaced armor, you know, putting it at 205mm thick, it still needs a, a guiding hand. If you guys are looking to get this tank, be my guest. But keep in mind, from my personal experience, which, just to show off my personal experience, on stream I only maintained a 45.71% win rate. And keep in mind, this is all time. Take a look at all the tanks below it. You know, we got the Scorpion, which 48.72, but it's a lightly armored tank. But I also maintained Super Unicum rating in the 39 battles I played. You look at the Kree events. 500 matches inside my Korea vets with a 64.6 win rate. And then you look at the Basante, 35 matches, 45% win rate. Trying to make a difference inside this tank is going to be extremely hard. And I honestly, I hate to say it, but I just don't recommend it. The armor, it's moderate. It's mostly in the front. The 75 millimeters on the side, you can side scrape. The turret itself, as long as you're maxing out your gun depression and then you max it out just a little bit more by an extra three degrees, the only tanks that are going to be going through you have over 
280 plus penetration, but if you're going up against, let's say, tier 8s, they're more than likely going to bounce. Now, I'm just really disappointed with how this tank was introduced into the game. And it, it just sucks. Other than that, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you guys in the next one. But, Sante, I, I'll play it a little bit more. I'll give it some runs, and I'll let you know later down the later in the future if the tank gets a buff, or if it gets a rebounce at all, or if anything gets changed. I'm kind of hoping that they do increase the reload a tad bit, because that would make this tank competitive. It would bring it back into the spotlight, which, honestly, never was in the spotlight, because it's brand new to the game. Now, till next time, you guys, take it easy. It was nice having you here. Thanks for listening to me complain about Wargaming's mistakes, because, honestly, they've been making a lot as of recent. And I'm not afraid to tell them that they are. So, good job, guys. Basante needs a little bit of work. Reload's about it. I'd say reload's about it. Other than that, it, it's it's a good performing tank. It's not going to be the best. It's going to hold a little bit, but not too much. You guys, have a blast. I'm out of here.